The date diff function has three arguments required, the date part, the start date, and the end date. Most common problem for me is understanding what are the date parts. You see these listed here. They're singular, they're all lowercase, and they're in single quotes. You can use hour and second, but that's not the most common. For the start date and the end date, you can use a date field that came from your data source. You can use a calculated date field, or you can use one of the built-in date functions such as today. Here are two examples of those of a date diff function. The first one is using two fields, either calculated or from the data source. The second one is using the today function. These are both using days, but they could have used obviously months or years as well. The other thing to be aware of with this is that it's going to return an integer. It's not going to give you partial days, partial years, partial months. The other thing to be aware of is when you're bringing it over to your uh, visual, you want to be using, usually using the average of a date diff. You don't want to use the sum. What the sum is going to do is it's going to add up all of those items for a particular um, row. In this case, for the ship date of January 5th, it's going to pull in all the items that show that shipped on January 5th. And you can see here the average is 443, but there must have been three items that shipped that day. And so the sum is 1300. A couple rows down, you see that 35, 3600. That must mean there must be nine items shipping that day or nine records with the ship date of January 3rd. And so it's nine times that. Where you use this in applications is if you're trying to track time between milestones, in this example, ship date from order date. The other way is once you get this calculated, you could use an if-then statement to determine if this project is red, yellow, or green. So determining the performance. 